racing to the 2020 Breeders' Cup, and this time, let's take a look and mow the lawn on the turf a mile and a half. This grade one race is always a mixture of European horses and some of the best American turfers going a distance of ground. And let's start off with one of the veteran campaigners from America with Arklo. Arklo comes off a big win, getting blinkers in the Kentucky race last time out at Kentucky Downs. And Arklo, you know, he's one of those horses. He's earned a lot of money, almost two and a half million dollars. Six-year-old has competed in all the big dances. He's a grade one horse, and if he gets the right trip, and it seems like blinkers may be the, the thing that's kind of turning him around in recent form, he could get a piece of the purse here in the Breeders' Cup Classic. Another horse that's been in all the dances in America is Channel Maker. Now, the key thing as you start to look at Channel Maker's past performances is notice his better races do tend to appear on yielding and soft courses. He's one of those type of horses that he likes a little bit of give. He runs well when he can get uh, kind of just sink in and get, get his stride and he can slow down those fractions, especially on the front end. He comes in in good form and really, again, if it rains on that Friday or even that Saturday morning at Keeneland, a horse like Channel Maker could be a little bit more alive than if it's fast and firm. Gufo is a three-year-old that's going to be taking on older horses. Christopher Clement trains. Big win the last time out in the Belmont Derby. Ran second in the Saratoga Derby. He's getting better. I'm just not sure he's ready to take on grade one horses, older horses going a mile and a half. But he should get the distance. I think he's got the class. But can he get that speed figure up another five or six points to really compete with some of these hard-hitting Europeans? Japan is a horse that comes in over from Europe, and this is a horse that's going to get bet a lot. Key factors for him, he's been facing some small fields over in Europe. I think he's going to benefit from a full field. I think he'll also benefit with a little bit of cover. He could possibly get Lasix, and Japan, he did win the Judmont International last year. He's 0 for 4 in 2020. Now, Lord North goes for John Gosden, and you always have to take a long look at his horse in this race. He points for the Breeders' Cup with his horses, and this horse, another one I think is going to benefit with a full field. He needs the cover. He's going to get some pace to run at. If the course is firm, I think he'll do really well. Lord North is definitely one you want to take a look at as those last couple of races with those smaller fields. He's lightly raced this year with just a few starts, and he's got three wins in his last four races. Magical is probably the race favorite especially with some of the recent defections in this race. Magical approaching two and a half, uh, over $5 million in earnings. And, you know, of course, she's ran in the Arc, the Irish Champion Stake, and all the big races over in Europe. You know, what I like about her is uh, running style. This filly, a uh, mare, can take, uh, take on the front end. She can come a little bit off the pace, uh, kind of make her own trip. And I think that could be beneficial, as there isn't really a lot of speed uh, this year with the American horses, a lot of times they like to stretch out the field and get the U Europeans a little bit further back than they want to be. So I think Magical could be the one of the ones that goes more forwardly placed. And then really the speed of the speed of this race is United. The outside horse goes for Richard Mantella, the judge. Going to have him ready, some strong recent workouts. Uh, ran in the John Henry's handicap second. Won the Charles Winningham Stakes. All the long distance races in an out west this year have been smaller fields and a little bit weaker competition. But United did run second at 51 to 1 last year in the Breeders' Cup turf. So he's got some back class and he seems to be training forwardly for this race. Now remember, we're going to be getting close to 15, 16 days away from the big dance. You got to start taking a look at these races. What I'm trying to do here when you take a look at these top seven or eight contenders is just take a look at the possible pace scenario? Are they coming into the race in good form? Do they have the class to compete in a grade one race with 10 or 11 or 12 horses? A lot of these horses, they look better in, in those smaller fields and when the race isn't as fast pace wise. So that's what I'm doing is trying to get you to take a look. We've got some top contenders for the Distaff, the Classic, the Juvenile races. Take a look at those as we get you ready for the 2020 Breeders' Cup.